Hi, I'm Cameron with Queerty, and I am so, so honored to be joined by David Archuleta today. David, how are you? Hey, Cameron, doing great. Thanks. G good. good to be here with you. In my mind, it makes a lot of sense to first dive into your latest single, Faith in Me. I had read that this is a song you started working on a while ago, but you decided to rewrite some of it after you came out last year. So perhaps I'm reading into it too much, but even the title, Faith in Me, that seems to pack a lot of meaning. Faith always meant something different to me all my life. And, and a lot of it had to do with like my my battle, my weakness, my thorn in my side. For me, it was my attraction to guys. And so it was kind of like the thing that kept me grounded and humbled. Like it was an expression of my imperfection. It was showing me that I needed God. I needed to be saved. I needed to be cleaned. And um, it just got to a point where it just felt like something doesn't feel right here. Like, you know, I, I feel like I shouldn't just wait for myself to change before I can find myself as lovable and worthy. Being queer or gay or LGBT can be, it's something, being gay can be beautiful. Being queer can be beautiful. And I feel like I'm experiencing that for my first time after all my life looking at it as something like, oh, wretched man that I am beating my chest, trying to humble myself and say, will God ever forgive me for how, what I am? So I, I think it's about breaking the cycle because a lot of Christian people, a lot of religious people mean well. And when I came out, a lot of Mormons were kind of like, you know, this doesn't seem right. Like, it seems like it, sh it should be okay for you to be who you are. We don't understand why the beliefs are the way they are. And I think a lot of people are just like, well, that's just the way it is. And I'm like, well, that's not what God told me. David, we're so lucky to have you speaking about this so thoughtfully and, and clear headed. I think it's just so important for people to be able to hear, you know, you be so honest about this journey that you've been on. Do you feel yourself as like a different person or that you're carrying yourself a different way now as opposed to over a year ago? I've had some belief changes, like I've had to reconstruct what what it is. It kind of changed my construct of what God is, what God's like, what he wants for me. I still don't know what I believe exactly because it's been a journey. I do feel loved and I feel hmm. whole, I feel completed by something out there. I've had to separate myself from my beliefs to not despise myself, you know? Um, because my church leaders would try to convince me like, you know, it's not okay what you're doing. Well, some of them, some, you know, I've gotten mixed, mixed um, <laughs> reviews. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm just gonna live my life. I'm gonna date guys and allow myself to love who I love and allow it to, to flourish and become whatever it, whatever it becomes. I wanted to really talk about <laughs> throwing it back. Your first post American Idol single was Crush. And I think I am, certainly speaking from my own experience, but that is a song that really struck a chord with me. And I think that there are a lot of other, other gay men, other queer people that maybe there was something about that song intrinsically, this unspoken quality that, that <laughs> drew it, drew us to it, drew us to you. I don't know. I mean, is that something that's surprising to hear? I didn't understand it at first because, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't like in tune with myself. I didn't understand my sexuality. I didn't, I think I was a bit oblivious to it. So I was like, why do I have so many gay fans? Um, you know, why do so many gay people relate to me? I didn't understand it. And I just simply was myself. And I didn't realize that just I had, just who I was, was like a lot of other queer people. The song Crush, I can see, cause it's like saying like, you're trying to deny these feelings that you have, but, then you kind of accept what it's like to feel that rush, to feel a crush on someone, to, to like them. And even though you try to like deny it and stuff, it's just like you kind of come to, to terms with it and say, this crush isn't going away. <laughs> mm -hmm. Looking back, I can see a lot of people just, especially a lot of queer people could c connect to who I was singing that song. I mean, I, honestly, I couldn't fully relate to that song. I didn't write it. It wasn't my own queer coming out to myself experience because I just hadn't come out to myself yet. I didn't do that until I was in my 20s. Looking back, I can totally appreciate mm -hmm. what it's meant for everyone. There's certainly room to interpret it 
like as a queer person, but I, I, I don't even know how to put words to it. There is just this intangible <laughs> thing sometimes, you know, it's just, we're, we are connected whether we know it or not. And it's, it's kind of amazing. I want to jump ahead to a more recent work of yours. Now it was really, really cool to see you in the production of Joseph's and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Were there nerves to jump into something like this? I was actually pretty nervous. I, I felt like to be a theater person, you needed a lot of energy a lot of exaggeration in your emotions and your performance. And I just was like, I don't know if I can do that. I had so much fun. I loved it. I guess a part of me has a natural like thespian spirit because my grandma, she was in musicals. So I don't know if like something in my DNA just kind of came out. I'm not like the most amazing actor, but I do love connecting to passionate songs. And there are a lot of passionate, deep, um, emo emotional songs in, in theater. I loved being with all the performers. They're so talented. And I felt like I was with my people, you know, because they're emotional performers, like sensitive, but love to perform and love to be, you know, united in a project together, to work in as a team, to paint this story and, and give this production to an audience it was it was just beautiful really beautiful I, i'd love to do more of it it does ask a lot of you as a performer to be front and center but i mean there's also the fact that <laughs> the role of joseph calls for you to be in nothing more than a loincloth for a good portion of the musical too and i'm sure that was nerve-wracking on its oh own my gosh. <laughs> i was terrified i'm like holy crap I'm like i need to i need to start really kicking it at the gym over there so i <laughs> But it wasn't bad. I was like, oh, this is fine. Like, I, it's not a big deal. Like, I was always afraid of showing my body before, probably from like a religious perspective as well. I'm like, I don't want to tempt people to think improper thoughts. But now I'm like, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> That's the spirit. <laughs> It's kind of like Utah Mormon porn in a sense, because like everyone <laughs> loved it when Donny Osmond did it. I'm like, come on, y'all know, like y'all are like, I don't know. I just thought it was funny. But no, that's hearing the way people talk. Like, oh my gosh, seeing Donny Osmond without his shirt on. And like, we're like seeing me without my shirt on. I'm like, oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> it's the <funny>. scandal. <laughs> David, thank you. Thank you again so, so much for all of your time. This you. has been really, really wonderful. Oh, likewise. It's been, it's been a pleasure.